Wonderful. Welcome, you folks. We're delighted to welcome you to our Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group meeting uh, this morning. This is Saturday morning, the 12th of August of 2023. I'm Don Snow. I'm here in Provo, Utah, and our uh, main speaker is with us online today, Marilyn Thompson. She's also our newsletter editor, and what a wonderful job she does with that. She's online as well. Uh, and Gerhard, she's here in Utah Valley also, and Gerhard Roof, who's our president and our host today, is online as well. We are delighted to have you folks with us. Uh, wherever you happen to be, we'd be interested to know where you are this morning, if you're wherever you're watching. If you're watching this six months from now, it's not as important for us to know where you're from. But if you're on online today, we'd like to know. You can be on Zoom to watch us. Uh, if you're a member of the Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group, or everybody can watch on Facebook. Uh, we'd like to start with a word of prayer, and we've asked Gerhard Roof, our president and our host today, if he would offer that for us. Gerhard? Our Father in heaven, uh, we are grateful to thee for the privilege of having technology available to assist us in our family history endeavors. We thank thee for the wealth of information that's available and the many people who uh, want to uh, serve us and uh, help us use technology better. We appreciate uh, uh, the uh, uplift that comes as we learn about our ancestors and the more details about their lives and pray that this time together will uh, serve us well. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Gerhard. We appreciate that. Well, today we have uh, uh, the opportunity of hearing from Marilyn Thompson, uh, who's the newsletter editor for us on our Utah Valley Technology and Genealogy Group newsletter. Our group has been in existence now for some 30-something years, more than 30 years. Uh, it used to be the old PATH users group back uh, many days, uh, many years ago. Uh, we changed the name, uh, I don't know, probably 15 years ago when we decided we'd talk about other things other than uh, just the personal ancestral file program. Um, and so it, uh, if you want a sample copy of that newsletter, it's, it's, it's a wonderful newsletter. It's about, uh, oh, we're up to 20, 30 pages. Uh, it, it's on email. It's not printed, but it's on email. Uh, and you can ask for a sample copy by going to our web page, which is uvtagg.org you'll see a link on there where you can click and say, please send me a sample copy and we'll send you one. If you want to join our group, we'd love to have you. It's only $15 a year. And then you get uh, lots of benefits of, uh, of, of being a, a member uh, with us. You get the newsletter and you get to watch these programs on Zoom and a whole bunch of other stuff. All our past programs, there's something like four or 500 in our, our uh uh, uh, our uh, archives now of classes and, and past presentations. Now, today we have the opportunity to hear from Marilyn Thompson, and she's going to be talking about something that we haven't talked about very much on here. I think we've maybe only had one talk years ago on the Daughters of the American Pioneer um, uh, records. She's going to be telling us about secrets that are hiding in there and ways that you can find information that will help you fill out your own genealogy and complete it uh, more. And so uh, we'll turn the time over to Marilyn and there will be a, a handout there. You, we usually have a handout posted, a link to it, posted on the Zoom uh, chat or if you're watching on Facebook on the comments uh, uh, as well. And uh, so uh, I think that's all we need to say about it. We'll turn the time over. Oh, let's see, I, I do wanna say there's a class coming up afterwards. Uh, at 11 o'clock. She'll be talking until 11 a.m. This is 10 a.m. now. She'll be talking till 11, and then she'll be doing a class after that. Marilyn, let's turn it over to you to learn to teach us about the DAR records. Oh, thank you, Don. I know um, it was cute because you said the, the DAR um, pioneers. Um, actually, this is the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, and often here in Utah, we confuse the, the Daughters of Utah Pioneers um, with the DAR. And, and I have people start saying, oh, yeah, my mother was a, a member. And, and what they were is really members of, of the DUP, um, the Daughters of Utah Pioneers. 
Um, let me say, um, um, there's a handout, this, there's a link on the screen that you can go to and get a copy of the handout also, um, um, but um, it is posted. Um, also, um, okay, so um, the purpose of this is to help you to strengthen your pedigree, but I am going to just give you a little bit of information about um, the um, what they are. So we're gonna start there, okay? Um, if, if, if it'll advance, just a minute. I'm, just a minute. Um, okay, okay, there we go. So um, originally um, the daughters belonged to the Sons of the American Revolution. And it was created to honor the centennial of the American Revolution in 1876. Um, but then they got a little uppity. And in 1890, they decided not to allow the women to be members anymore. And um, so the women um, wrote articles and they said, wait, wait, were there no mothers of the revolution? And um, so they founded their own organization. Um, and these women, there were four women who had fathers and grandfathers who are patriots of the American Revolution. So when you start thinking 1890, um, that is really close. Um, if these women are in their 80s, it is their father who were members of the revolution. That kind of shows you how this organization has um, been documenting these patriots for very many, many years, okay? Um, so this is um, a Revolutionary War widow, Mary Smith Lockhart. Um, so she was married to a patriot. She hosted the first meeting, okay? And now they have millions of members and they are one of the oldest organizations of that of women who have organized themselves. Now, um, the DUP is um, also does a lot of genealogical work, but um, the daughters of the Utah pioneers, but they really are more of a social organization. And so one of the very first things that the DAR said were not just a social party organization, um, it's an order of patriotic, historical, and genealogical, and they hold themselves to this. Their goal is to educate um, children in the schools about the Patriots and the Constitution. They protect monuments. They have like 36 different committees you can belong to that work really hard. And, um, and um, as this screen shows you, they come from many walks of life. They don't, they don't say, oh, well, you're only black or white or, anything like that. Um, but in their requirements, they do require that you um, are a literal bloodline descent from um, someone who aided in achieving American independence. And then you have to prove documentation um, such as um, birth records and death records to prove that you are related. And that's one reason that this is very important. Um, so um, to be able to join, um, some people say, well, I want to join through my husband. I want to be able to join through my, um, 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 let's see, there was one woman that wanted to join through an uncle. And um, it isn't. It is a bloodline. It is a literal descendant. And some people think that that maybe is a little exclusive in that it has to be, you know, a bloodline rather than being able to be adopted. Um, the Daughters of, of the Utah Pioneer allows you to join through your husband or through an adopted line. And so that is something that's really important to understand. Now, there are chapters of these um, DAR and they are scattered um, all over uh, the United States. They are in other countries. They are worldwide. And um, there are even Canadians who um, were patriots in the revolution. And so they, we have um, French who um, served on the ships um, to help America. And so there are French who um, are members of the daughters of the American uh, revolution. And so um, just 
you know, know that um, there is a chapter near you and there is a register near you that can help you to be able to join. And they meet together, they have speakers, they have wonderful objectives and you can meet some really wonderful forms. If you wanted to join, this is the screenshot um, called the membership interest form at um, www.dar.org. You fill it out and it's sent over to what's called a registrar. And then she would reach out to you and help you to identify your patriot line. They help you to be able to form documentation. You are required to provide your own birth certificate and um, and your parents and grandparents. Um, so you are you do have to participate in this. Um, one of the first introductions most people get to the DAR is that um, their committees for each of these chapters have people who try to preserve the records. And so for hundreds of years, since 1890, these chapters have been creating indexes of records. So they have been indexing cemeteries that some of those cemeteries don't even exist now. They have been creating indexes of court records. They've been creating indexes of marriages um, and deaths and that. And they have to be one of the main forces that has kept the National Archives serving um, the local people. Um, politically, they are a powerful force that they don't take size in political, but they have issues that they will speak up on. and. Um, so it's kind of wonderful. These lineage books, um, they're indexed on Ancestry.com. You'll see them. Um, what a lineage book that you would run across is, is a list of what they call patriots. And a patriot is not necessarily a person who served in the war um, or was in the military. They're anybody who can prove that they were loyal to America. So if you had an ancestor who was... Um, uh, served in the government that they were trying to establish, they would have been hung by the British for being a sheriff or being serving on a committee, or if they rallied other people to try and, and support the American cause. Those are all reasons um, to be a patriot, and therefore you could um, they can be listed in these books. Now, the reason for my presentation is that all of these books are now online at dar.org. And, um, and so in these books, you'll have just a little bit of information and you'll have a little number. But to be able to go online and see these applications or use these applications or use the documents or to use those books that were created is really an amazing resource that is va very valuable. Um, these applications, um, there are two parts of it. And sometimes people get confused because um, when they start out looking at application, um, the first part of the application is a pedigree lineage that names the people. And often those are published on ancestry.com or um, there are microfilm copies of these lineages. But also, there was a list of documents that were used to support these pedigrees. And so, for example, when I have gotten into the first pedigrees, I'll see letters from a brother of a patriot or an uncle or somebody that says, oh, yeah, he served here and then he went there. And first he was in, in North Carolina, but then they moved to Tennessee. And amazing um, documents that are um, part of these lineages that are just delightful to be able to find. And those have been digitized and um, some of them are available, some of them aren't. Um, if they are recent generations, then the DAR will not um, give that kind of information because of privacy. But they also um, may charge for some documents. So we'll talk about how to do that. So here's these first applications. They would be filled out, you know, typed up by the grandchildren or great grandchildren of the revolution. So here in this one, you can see there are lots of little um, markings, okay, along with the typed information that goes on. Um, one of the big differences between the sons of 
the, the, the American Revolution and the daughters is that the daughters absolutely had to have documentation to prove lineages. I remember there was one of the sons of uh, the American Revolution I was looking at, and he had listed um, the daughters as a source. And then when I look at it, there isn't even such a um, the person who had that number for their application wasn't the person they required, but that man joined the sons of the pint, uh, the revolution. Um, and so even currently, a son can join by using a daughter's application, but a daughter, uh, the daughters will not accept an application from other lineage societies. You have to provide original documentation for these lineages. Um, so these little marks that we're looking at, for example, there's a DC, and DC is a death certificate, okay? And then 1850 is the 1850 census. And so that kind of gives you an idea of the documents they're using. Um, down at the bottom, there's a number for John Huckleby, and that number will be an application that was prior to this one. And Often people are joining using prior applications. So if you have a relative that joined before you, you can use their documentation and then just supply your own birth certificate and your parents' um, information um, to prove it. Also, you'll see there's little teeny check marks by each of the pieces of information. This is another thing that is really valuable because there is a document tied to every date um, and every place um, to prove that this is accurate. And um, as we know with online pedigrees and that sometimes they, those dates are more, um, you know, been passed down without a real good source. And so um, they have carefully documented each of these pedigrees, okay? So, um, this page um, is the second part. Let me um, say this one there. Um, well, actually, this is a close up of the page so you can see that. This is the second part of that. Let's be the third page. Um, this has their service. What did they do to get into um, the Patriot Index to be listed as a Patriot? Okay. And then you can see the records that have been listed. Um, what, where were these sources? What did they use? And, and this is just such an amazing resource to have. I remember when I sat down with Philip Huckabee and um, started reading the documentation and looking at the map where he had served, the miles that he marched and the battles that he fought in of Gates' defeat. It was just so powerful um, emotionally for me. And so I recommend if you do have a Patriot that you do take the time to really find out where they were and what they did. So now on the left part of the screen, I show that um, these are the types of service. And sometimes you'll come across abbreviations for this. There are military service. They could have been in a state Navy, a French army. Um, then there's what's called Patriot Service. So if they so signed a pledge or made a donation to the American cause. And so for example, there were French and Spanish who donated a penny um, to free the Americans, then they could, could be a Patriot. Um, and another way is community service. They did something to serve this brand new government that was being set up, okay. Here we have um, the, the DAR application document that shows um, the references for each of those generations. Again, um, so for example, it says the estate papers of John Huckleby probated the 15th of March in Marion County, Georgia, book such and such. Well, I didn't know Phil Huckabee had a probate record, but boy, that was such a joy to be able to go and find uh, that um, probate. Um, my ancestor, she was um, pre-1850 census, and so therefore she wasn't listed among the other children. And, um, and so this probate was done by her husband, and that was one of the ways I was able to prove to get in. Okay. 
Here's another example of what those, those references and those lineages and the extracts will be that go along with those application. And then this is the bottom part. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, what this bottom part is. It says, um, these are other children. So um, let's say um, some of these children um, didn't have children. But this is helpful because you not only get a child, but you get this, the, um, their spouse listed. Um, and so um, this was really helpful to me because as I had been going through land records and things, the, the name Isaac Clemens kept popping up and I hadn't even realized that he was a son-in-law. And Jay Parker, the same thing. And then I was able to go on and expand this pedigree of this Revolutionary War ancestor. So now, in addition to the application, there are indexes to records not found anywhere else. Um, this is the DAR library in Washington, DC. Um, the daughters got enough money that they are just down there in that expensive real estate. It, it is an amazing experience to be able to walk in and, and see these genealogical records that the, the daughters have accumulated. They have histories that are not available, family histories that are available nowhere else. Um, and they have researcher. So online at dar.org, there's what's called the Genealogical Records Committee uh, Report Committees. And so is what they would do is they would pick something to index and they would publish these. They would publish abstracts of wills. They would um, collect obituaries. One of the huge collections that the daughters are famous for is their Bible records. And um, these have now been put into digital images and those pages are online, but they may have to be purchased. But let me also say, although, you know, the record, I mean, the book number that is there um, in the library catalog at the DAR or may not be the same as say at the Family History Library in Salt Lake, or in um, the Birmingham, Alabama um, library, um, many, many of these books were donated by the daughters to research um, libraries all over. And if you are in any prominent research library, you are going to be running into these genealogical record reports, okay? So um, we're, this picture is, if you go to dar.org, this is what you're going to see, okay? Um, research your family. And they have some wonderful free classes for beginners to get started on researching your ancestor. Um, and there are records that you can access for free, even if you're not a member of the DAR, okay? So on this screenshot, I have a little arrow pointing to the library, okay? Um, and this is a help to help you to plan a visit to their library. It also has the services. Um, they have um, professional genealogists that you could say, could you please um, um, explain you know, what documentation you have on this person or something and they will respond. Um, they also um, will send copies and that, and so that's that page. This page, um, it, if you'll notice at the top, they have ancestor, member, descendants, and then this GAR, that, remember that's genealogical um, record committees reports, genealogical reports, I, I'll, I'll remember soon. Okay, so. Um, so they have a tutorial on how to use that and, and it's worth watching, um, it is valuable. Um, it shows you the Bible records, the catalog, um, and we're gonna review some of this. But we're gonna start with the first database is called the Ancestor Search. It used to be called the Patriots Index, but because everybody thinks of um, military, um, with patriots, they have now call them ancestor. So these are Revolutionary War ancestors. And, and you can type in the name of a person that you think is your ancestor. 
remember spellings um, may not match. So they have um, may created a name and you have to find the name that matches there. And so for example, many patriots came from Germany. And um, so you may be using um, the German version, but they have the anglicized version in this thing. So um, let's go ahead and search. Let me also explain that these three databases are all connected. So there'll be an ancestor, there'll be the members list of members who submitted that, and there'll be also descendants that are named on these applications. And so this is uh, an amazing database that has just recently been created. So I'm gonna type in my ancestor's name, Huckleby, and um, we're going to see um, here. Um, oh, let me explain this site. Um, many people don't know if they have Revolutionary War ancestors. And so one of the tips I have for you is to use the fan chart in Family Search. Okay. And as what I do is I make sure that I have seven generations shown. And then I click on the view that shows the birthplace by color. And so then I'm not hunting for um, the person who was born and died in Germany. Um, I'm not trying to put them in the revolution in America. Okay. Um, but then I start looking for people who lived in America um, in 1776, um, around that period of time. On my screen, I'll put these the fan chart right next to the ancestor search. And then I'll start typing in these individuals. And so here I show you, um, I click on the little card on the family search tree, um, brings up Philip Huckabee and I've got his information there and I've typed in Huckabee. And then um, what will come up next is that little card at family search is next to the information that will be shown in the ancestor search. And I start comparing the, the, the place and the date. And I can't tell you how many people are so excited. They'll send me a very common name and they say, well, he was an ancestor. And I'll say, yeah, but that guy was in Connecticut and yours is in Vermont and or your person's in North Carolina. And, and even though they have the same name and they were born the same year and they served, you know, um, these are two different people. So this is an important place to start. Okay. Now I just um, have showing here, they have an ancestor number. So this is really important um, when you're talking in the DAR, um, what is the ancestor's number? So there are two numbers. There's an ancestor's number and then every member who joins gets her own number. And so they'll say, well, what number was your Aunt Mary? And, um, and you'll say, I don't know, but this is my ancestor's name. So you can go into this ancestor and then start scrolling through the applications till you find Aunt Mary. Um, and then you'll be able to see your pedigree, okay? So down here, another important piece of information on this page are the spouses. Um, I'm seeing more and more in family search that um, people are pulling in marriages that are kind of impossible. Um, and so it's reassuring to know that there is a document for each of the spouses that will be listed here. And I have seen up to four different spouses listed. And, um, and that's comforting to know that there is some documentation before that spouse would be listed there. However, you also have to remember there may be spouses who didn't have descendants that um, someone has proven their lineage. And so this doesn't exclude um, all other spouses because it's not listed in this directory. So now we're going to scroll down a little bit further and here are the applications um, for Philip Huckabee, okay? And um, this, the bottom one, this is by the blue, that's mine I, that I proved. I am a first uh, person that proved her application. And um, it was just really exciting when I went on here and found out that two other people <laughs> joined because of my application. Um, so here are the numbers. This is uh, my number, okay. Um, and then these are the lineages. And then you'll see up at the right that you can actually purchase a copy 
of that those um, that I was showing you the the person's name and and also the documents that were submitted. Um, if the individual is living, um, that will not be shared with you their information, but um, you can be able to see the document. Okay, so these are the proven children and um, and their wives. Okay. Now, um, you can see on this sheet, um, this page, how um, the name has been restricted, and that's because um, that person is living, um, but it was the same person who joined under Philip Eckaby. But then when we click on that little um, you know, icon there, this is what you'll see, okay? Here are the lineages that you can see um, and the dates that were submitted with that lineage. Um, and it's important for you to be looking at the most recent one, because as time has gone on, we all know that more and more documents can be collected to prove more and more information. And so the most recent one will have the most recent and the most correct information. Okay. So this, again, is an ancestor that we were looking down. And you'll see there's an S that says there are supporting documents available. Um, a D um, and, and a, a P means there's descendants available um, list, um, but not this ancestor. Okay, so this is the next page. Um, there were, um, well, actually, let me go back. There are some that there's a little S there and they joined where well, there's a little exclamation point. And if we were to click on that little icon there, then you will see this. Um, it was called a short form. And there was a short period of time when they said, oh, we're gonna streamline all of this. And so these people joined without submitting enough documentation. And so those are not good applications for you to look at because there, there is not enough listing for you to be able to find profitable to use, okay? So there's instructions for ordering applications and supporting documents. Um, and that if you click on that purchase, okay, right there. Um, and these are the options. You can buy it with a credit card. Um, you can send a, an email request. Um, you can get an online copy. Um, and I have had these documents emailed back to me. Um, and, so, and you can even just ask for the documents. Say, yeah, I don't need the lineage. I just need the documents, okay? Um, and there's the fees that are there. Okay, so now we're back to this ancestor page. Um, so this is the page you would go to. You click on um, add it to your shopping cart and it will come to you at three o'clock in the morning if that's when you're shopping. <laughs> um, and um, it's, it's really helpful to have those documentations. Now it's important to understand that um, older applications may not have supporting documents. Um, you remember those years before photocopy machines when you were handwriting things? Um, uh, people were sending in um, their Bibles um, or they were sending in their marriage certificates. And so they would request those documents were returned. And, and of course, the DAR didn't have microfilming. They didn't have photocopiers in that. But so when you're looking at these applications, notice that 1984 is a cutoff for the documentation. Um, now there may be earlier um, applications that do have letters from um, a brother of a patriot or an uncle, or they may have other things. So there may be documentations in earlier applications um, and usually is, is what I have found is they are letters, um, letters from the family, they are stories, they are things like that. Um, but but and mostly that documentation may be just a list of a book that they found or they went to that they found the application, okay. Now there's another term at the DAR, it's called a supplemental application. And this, what that is, is, is I have like five ancestors that are patriots, but I join under one primary one. And then if I want to have a little pin um, or say I want to claim all of my ancestors, then I create what's called a supplemental application. 
And again, supplementals, then it won't have the proof um, for some, some generations because I've already proven those on my originals. And it's just the supplemental to prove those last few generations to the Patriot. Okay. And um, the supplementals, those may not um, have as much. Okay. Now, when you're in the database, you're going to see little um, alerts that come up on like this. Okay. This is really exciting to me. And the reason is that um, the daughters, as they have started to go in and create this database identifying the person, they will find, for example, people with the same name. I have a, a dear friend, Sandra Brimhall, and there were like four men with the same name in the same county. Um, and to prove that her um, ancestor also served and that he's the right one. And so she had to go through and prove that her ancestor was different than the other men with the same name. And so as they have done this, um, for example, Daniel Boone, um, boy, yeah, lots of people have claimed Daniel Boone, but which Daniel Boone? And um, so the, they have, um, identified problems and you say well why is that exciting and it's exciting because they um, have professional genealogists that have sitting down and written a report that explains what the problem is and where um, there is a conflict and that is a place for you to start um, and we inherit our pedigrees but that's the title of, of this presentation is that, that we are trained to strengthen and create correct pedigrees, okay? So um, this is another air message that will come up. It'll say, this has to be created as a new ancestor. Um, be, and it could be that um, the application was sent in really early and it was a letter from an uncle that said that his brother did serve or something like that. And as they've gone back in, they say, you know, we now have digital copies of these units and things like that. And so therefore they want to bring the standard up. Okay. And so you can't um, join um, by using the prior application. You have to provide your own documentation. And that doesn't mean that this person wasn't a, um, a patriot or an ancestor. It just means they need newer and better documentation. Okay. And so that's one thing I often will see. Well, they, this person has been proven, but um, yeah, this often good to just go in and check. Now, remember the next tab is the member. Um, and so they have a, a, a national number and you could go in and find um, the number of your um, aunt, your aunt, grandmother, great grandmother, somebody who joined. OK, and then th that's where you would be looking at. And they these are tied. As I said, these three databases are, are joined together. And then the third um, tab is an exciting one because they list the descendants on these applications. And um, so um, let's say you have um, an, an ancestor, but maybe um, they are midway on that application. Well, you can go in and find the documents that were used for that person. And that is part of this database, um, those mid range. So not the, there's the, the Patriot ancestor and the applicant. And then this descendants lists all of the people that are named in between, okay? All right, and those are tied together. Um, this, um, when you click on that, this is what you'll be able to see. Um, um, you'll search all the Hyatts. Um, you'll be able to see as you scroll down, um, this one says, you know, treat this as a new application because even though they were listed, they weren't. This is um, George Ross and there've been problems discovered. Well, this is one of my ancestors and because he was a very famous general, all of his children um, were named John Ross and his ancestors. And so this is an example of that. Now, this is another tab we're gonna go into. This is Bibles. And the daughters have been collecting Bibles forever. And the exciting thing about this index online is that they 
um, if you put in a name, so I put in Bubsby, okay, then you will be able to see all the other people listed on the same page uh, that was submitted before you buy the Bible. And so, for example, at the top, it says Ashcroft and Sally Busby Godshall. And I'll say, oh, um, I, boy, those are not any of the names that are in my family. So I'm not going to buy that Busby Bible, that page. Okay. Um, but maybe you're going through and you go, oh, wait, um, I have to tell you one of these Bible records I that I ordered, I had always wondered where there were like two middle names that were always cited on different pedigrees. And I'm going, there's no documents where they ever use those middle names. And it wasn't until I got the Bible record, I found out at their birth, they were given those middle names. And um, that was really exciting for me to be able to find out the source of those middle names. So if we click, I'll go back. So if I click on that little number, that page number, this is where I see all the people that are listed in that Bible record. And then I could see if that is a page that I would want to buy or see, or if I'm at the library, um, you can do. And then they have right there, you can go ahead and buy it. Um, if it's a digital format, then you would get it. Um, if it's not a digital format, then they, you would order it and they would um, send it to you. You get it within two, maybe three weeks. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the third part, okay, or another part. This is the Genealogical Records Committee reports, okay. Um, again, this section, um, you will have pages. And so, for example, here's the book title. It says New Jersey DAR Report, and then it has, this is, you know, the um, kind of the call number, and it says Bible Records and Family Records. Um, and again, I could click on the number and I would see all the people that are listed. So this is helpful, for example, probate records to be able to see family um, members that are listed in a probate record. This is an example of that page if I were to order it. Um, because I looked on Ancestry.com and I saw that this um, was one of those things, then I have that image in their books. Um, also, Family Search has um, a lot of these books, and I would be able to go and to find um, what it is. Okay. Um, okay, now we're going to try Huckleby. And so here's Huckleby, and um, these are tax returns. Oh, wow, they have indexed tax returns. And I would be able to see marriage records, and I would be able to, they've indexed so many records. Um, and this shows you different records that they have that show, this is my ancestor, Celia, um, that they have found her in these documents. And I would click on that document and I would see, oh, there's her husband. Okay, this is the right Celia Huckabee. Okay, now let me tell you, these are indexes. These are not the original records. Um, and so, of course, um, as soon as we find this, we're going to go to Family Search and look for the images or Ancestry or My Heritage or um, maybe to the courthouse and um, look for the original records. Okay. Ancestry, um, this is where I would find that property record that I was showing you there. Okay. This is a sample of Family Search. I go into the tax records and I would find the original copies. Notice this is what I was telling you about in Family Search. It says Daughters of the American Revolution. So this is the index that this um, chapter created. Um, and this is what you'll see. This is the book. And um, this is what you're looking for. Okay, this is the uh, graveyard. Often these graves, this is an example. Um, she, the headstone um, is no longer readable. And um, she's next to her daughter. Um, and only the way, the only way that I knew that she was in this grave is because of the DAR index. Okay. All right. So these are, um, we're still in the collections. It's what happened is that um, uh, um, Family Search went in, um, I'm trying to remember what year, probably have it in my notes. 
um, to um, and they microfilmed all of these books. And there is um, an individual who took these and created a reference, um, actually more than one individuals. And um, so there is an index to these genealogical record reports. Um, and so there was an index created by Family Search of the 35,000 microfilm references from these reports. And you could go in and look for your ancestor and it'll have all of them. It'll have the probate records under that name and that, um, and that could be helpful. This is what um, um, E.K. Kirkham, the genealogist with the Genealogical Society is the one who created it. The problem with using this index is that he had his own codes um, to the books, to the um, thing. And so you, this is what you'll open it up and you'll see your ancestral name and then it'll have the number there, okay? And um, so you have to go in and you have to find and decode what it is. One of the things, um, I just a warning as a genealogist is that um, they often say that the the records of the East are in the West. Um, as people migrated, they took their um, pedigrees with them and their stories with them. And so, for example, uh, um, the Genealogical Society in California may be the person that has the Bible record, who has done the research, that, that has submitted the application. And so this, for example, is a collection in California, um, but the person that you're wanting to know about is in North Carolina. Okay, so this is just, you know, what is available. This is um, Kate Kirkham's index to some Bible records and family records. Um, and again, he has these little codes that you have to, to be able to look up. Um, some states have gone on um, since then and have created an every name index um, from the genealogical records. And this has, I found to be a huge time saver. For me, the most important is when I am doing really difficult research and I need to find where they are in court minutes and taxes and deeds. And if you've ever gone cross-eyed by trying to read court records and deeds, or pages and pages of tax records, you would say, wow, there is an index available. So I'm gonna give you, this is a snippet from um, one Tennessee County that I was researching. This is their court records. And this was Jacob Brinkley was the ancestor I was trying to prove. And these are all the pages that he has listed in that court records minutes. And so I went through page by page, just turning the pages until I find the family page that um, was the resolution of his probate record that um, showed the dispersing of the information. And it was in the minutes. It wasn't in the probates. It wasn't in um, a will. It was in the minute book. And so this was a really valuable index um, that is found in those genealogical records. This is um, an every name index to South Carolina genealogical records. And it was pre um, prepared by the Genealogical Society. Um, it, it is older. Um, and so there've been a lot of um, the genealogical record indexes that have been created since then, but. Again, this was very valuable to me because it told me there was a Bible record available. It told me that there was a will that was available. Um, and so you might try to use that. Um, these are the films um, and these will be online now. Okay. Um, this is an, um, ancestry.com. This is the lineage books that they have for George Ross. Okay. Family search books, again, you'll want to go in there. Um, they'll have all the marriage records of Douglas County, okay? And so that's what these all name indexes will lead you to is something like this. Now, last of all, there is um, a professional service that the DAR has that they offer. Um, and um, 
um, they have, um, they will help you to create applications for other societies, okay? And uh, if you uh, request documents for certain things for proofs, they have some professionals that you can hire. It was really reasonable. I made a request, it was $35. And they sent me um, the documentations in other counties and other states that I didn't know existed. Um, and you might consider that. Now, um, what I'm gonna talk about really quickly in my last few minutes is that there is a local chapter registers um, who would help you to create an application. And these register have extra tools. And I'm just gonna show you some of the things that they have. Um, they are not permitted to use their tools for just genealogical research for anybody. Mm -hmm. In fact, you almost you know, sign away a, a waiver that says, I'm, I'm not going to use my tools or viewing rights to, to just look up um, my own family history. It, it can only be to prove an application, okay? But the reason I'm showing these to you is that if you were considering or your daughter was considered joining the Daughters of the American Revolution, then um, they should know about how a registrar's role and the lineage committee's role is to be able to help look at these, okay? All right, so this says, um, I'm gonna finish with many small people in many small places do many small things that can alter the face of the world. And um, that is how I feel about um, these people. Um, one of the things the daughters say is the reason we do what we do is the best way to honor your um, ancestor is to have the same courage and the same willingness to serve your community and your country. And um, that's what's happening is that your research, um, if you put it online in a family tree or that, it is serving your community and honoring others and honoring these ancestors. Um, when you become involved in the, the service projects, for example, the Daughters of the American Revolution honor, um, do the Patriot flights to honor the veterans. They um, support veterans' homes. They are there to welcome um, new citizens and lead them in the Pledge of Allegiance. They are doing many, many good things. Um, they honor other people. They have special awards for people who have served the committee. And so that's kind of what I think of when I think of the Daughters of the American Revolution is, is all of these small hands doing good things within our community. So um, this is just a little bit of supplemental information. Um, we've kind of covered these things, um, but I just wanted to ask now, are there questions um, about um, the daughters um, for, um, you know, this, this is going on past our time. Do we have any questions that have come up? Okay. All right, are there any questions that, uh that people have. I've got a couple. Okay, Don. Uh, all right. Uh, because of my poor eyesight and poor hearing. Yeah. Uh, the records that are on here. Yeah. Uh, do you have to pay for them, or or are they are there any original sources online here that you can do screenshots of? Um. So you have. Um, so for example, um, a lineage, then it will have um, a listed lineage, but it's not original documents. I think that's what you're hunting for is original documents. Uh -huh. And those aren't available. Um, you, you would have to purchase it. Um, you would have to purchase it, yeah. So, so, so if you write to them, you can purchase yeah. a copy of the original document. Right. Is that correct? Yeah, however, if you were in Washington, D.C., and you walk into the library and you sit down at the computer, <laughs> there are digital images that are available there. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's a huge library and an incredible resource that I have not talked about. Okay. 
Uh, okay, now it, it, the the references there, as you showed yeah. some of those references, like that probate and other things yeah. that you didn't know about before. Yeah. Uh, once you know that, then you can start looking yeah. elsewhere, like you looked on Ancestry and other places. Yeah. So they, now, they, but. Uh, to yeah. see those indexes, do you have to be a member of the DAR or can, is that open mm -hmm. to anybody? Yeah, those indexes is what the indexes is open to anybody to see um, all the people listed on the page of the index. And then, you know, if you need to then, you know, um, go in further. Okay. And, and it'll tell you, you know, the records of this in this county, they have uh, a will, um, and so then that that may be all that you need is to see that this 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 individual and his children are listed in a will in this county and yeah and you, where the will is That's, yeah where yeah. the will is or that there's a probate record there or or court records so for example yeah. you you've gone through minutes haven't you Don <laughs> minutes yeah, yes. you don't know where to look. And yeah. they're so miserable yeah. to read. Oh, there's, uh, but but we're grateful for large screens at our age, aren't we? That blow up those images, yeah. and we're able to see those. Okay. I have a question on Facebook. Yeah. From Pat, um, yeah. is she asks, uh, is your PowerPoint type presentation available to download? You know, I, I did um, save it as a PDF, and I will send that to anybody that would like a copy of that. I, I guess I could um, email that to you, too, um, um, Don, but um, it is available. I'd be happy to share that with anybody that would like to, to have a copy of that. Well, um, and, the, and her presentation is available if you're a member. It'll be available on, U yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, for a while, but then if you're a member, it'll be available forever for you. If you're a member that's, of our group, that's true. It'll be available that people would have. Uh -huh. And so, on my very first screenshot, let's see if I can go back to that. I um, let me try this. Escape. It's not. Um, let me, it did escape. It was slow to react. Okay, so here is. This is Marilyn Thompson at gmail.com. Um, so if you want to email me and ask for a, a, um, this, the, a copy of the PowerPoint, I would be happy to email that to you. Okay. I have a uh, question too, uh, Marilyn. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, curious which, if any of the features you mentioned at dar.org mm -hmm. are available without being a member of uh, the DAR? So everything that I mentioned that I showed is available to the public. The DAR.org, um, all oh. of those indexes, all of those pages, everything. Um, I have not shown you anything except the one little screenshot that a register could see. Um, you know, um, that's probably the only difference between just a general public member going in, um, you're able to see Bible records um, indexed with and click on see who's listed in the Bible record. You're able to see a uh, court record, a list of who, um, if, if a person is in the court records, and then you could order a copy. I think it's $15 for non-members and $10 for members to order that page I showed you of um, the minutes. Uh, from a court record so yeah thank you that's good uh, our, uh, uh another question uh, uh this is from the daughters of the american revolution what about the sons of the american revolution the sar do they mm -hmm. have comparable things like this this is uh, it's kind of funny because 10 years ago they finally got a library built <laughs> <laughs> the daughters have had one for a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We hear about and the them, sons but we don't hear now. About have, they are. They yeah. have a library. Yeah, the sons do have um, a web page, and they do have a patriot list, and they do have the documentation of sons who have proved their lineage, and you could purchase that. As far as the documentation and accessing documents, they they don't have the services that the the daughters of the American Revolution have, um, but they, yeah, they're a good organization. 
Well, the DAR have been a wonderful organization. It um, is. Uh, while we were, my wife and I were directors of the Family History Center in New York City, yeah. in Manhattan, they invited me, the DAR chapter up in, uh, I think it was White Plains, invited me to come up and talk to them, which I See? did. And that's, that's one of, yeah, that's for joining. That is one of the wonderful things about being a member is you are yeah. continually associating with people who are bright, um, intelligent, knowledgeable people doing good things. Um, yeah. And in this world, we need to do more of those. So this is this picture that I'm showing on the screenshot. This is a very famous patriot. Her name is Molly Pitcher. And her husband was wounded and she jumped in and helped run the cannon um, at the battle. And so as a result of that, she applied for a pension and she got it. <laughs> and she's one of the first women who has a statue to a woman. <laughs> and um, in our day and age, um, that is one of the other things that I have loved about the daughters is the daughters believe that there are mothers <laughs> and yeah, there are sisters right. and there are wives yeah, yeah. that are <laughs> patriots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Are there any other questions? And if there are not, uh, we'll, uh, we, we thank Marilyn Thompson very much for the presentation today on the DAR records. Uh, if you're watching this on zoom, just stay logged in because we'll be starting into her class in just another few minutes. If you're watching this on Facebook, you'll have to log in again to watch her class, which will start in another five or 10 minutes. She's going to be talking in another five or 10 minutes on what well, I guess I was going to say it's related, but it's not really city directories, uh, which is another wonderful source and newspapers. She'll be giving a whole class on that starting in just another few minutes. So we thank you for all attending. And we'll welcome you back in another few minutes for the second hour of Maryland's presentations.